Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, previous lecture was about trigonometry um, and its roots in some practical problems. And we have already defined certain functions um, of uh, acute angles called sine, cosine, etc. Well, this lecture is more about abstract math and uh, I will define the trigonometric functions in a little bit more precise manner, uh, the way how it's basically defined right now for all kinds of angles, not only acute ones. Um, so here is what I would like to present to you about this particular approach to defining trigonometric functions. Consider uh, rectangular coordinates and a unit circle which has the radius 1 and the center in the center of coordinates. Next, for any angle, I mean any angle, acute, obtuse, 90 degrees, 270 degrees, whatever. We can find a point on this circle which, which is the result of movement of this particular ray which is coinciding with um, x-coordinates to whatever angle we are talking about. Let's say we are talking about this angle. So, basically any angle can be uh, constructed this way by moving uh, this particular ray counterclockwise by the amount which is basically signifies the, the value of our angle. It can be in degrees, for instance, 90 degrees means we're moving this way. Uh, or it can be in radians. Uh, pi radians would be half circle, if you remember. Right? Because the whole circle is 2 pi radians. Um, now, we can also move, counter, uh, not counterclockwise, but uh, clockwise. And that's considered to be a negative direction. So we can move by minus uh, 45 degrees, and that would be from here, clockwise, to this particular position. So what I would like to say is that for any numerical value of the angle, whether it's expressed in degrees or radians, and there are only these two measurements, we can always move our ray from original position to whatever this particular angle signifies and find a point A which corresponds to this particular angle. Angle can be positive, angle can be negative, uh, not even necessarily uh, it's supposed to be less than 360 degrees, it can be uh, 400 degrees, which means we will move full circle, that's 360, and then 40 more, and that will be 400. So, for any numerical value of the angle, we can always find the point. Great. Now, this point, A, will have certain coordinates. Let's call it A and B. Okay? Now, Position of the point A, as I was saying, is basically reflecting the angle we are talking about. So let's say the angle, we use the Greek letter phi for this. Now, the definition, and that's a very simple definition. This is A and this is B, right? Because these are coordinates. A means the uh, projection onto the x-axis, B is this projection onto the um, y-axis. 
So, and now I'm just defining. This is a definition. There is no explanation here. It's a definition. Sine phi, by definition, equals to b. Cosine phi equals to 8. So, don't forget that the radius is 1. A and B are correspondingly abscess, abscissa and ordinate of the point which represents our angle. And these are definitions. Now, it's quite different from whatever I have defined or at least explained about in the previous lecture. I was drawing the right triangle, if you remember, and I was saying that the sine of B is a, a, a ratio of B over C, right? And the cosine, so this is the sine, and cosine is ratio A over C. So that's how I explain it. Now, is it different? Well, actually, well, it's obviously different, but it's a, a natural expansion of this definition. And here is why. Let's consider our point is here, which is, let's call it P, and it has also A and B. This is A, this is B, this is the same as B. So, this point B now represents an acute angle from 0 to 90 degree, from 0 to P over 2, uh, to pi over 2 radians. Now, here, hypotenuse of this particular triangle, let's call this Q, so we are considering triangle OPQ. Now, the hypotenuse, which is C, is equal to 1. Because if you remember, we started from the unit circle, which has a radius 1. Now, if this is a, a phi, then B over C would be, by my previous definition, a sine, right? So sine is B over C. But C is equal to 1. So it's B. So it's so it's it's, it's B only. And that's exactly how I defined it, right? So my point here is that instead of drawing some triangle of some arbitrary size with this particular angle phi, I have basically said, look, look I don't need this kind of arbitrary decision. I, I don't know what kind of triangle. It's not good for a definition to say. Well, let's take arbitrary triangle and measure the ratio. Now, if I am fixed to a unit circle, it's a precisely concrete radius one, and I don't want to consider anything else. I could have probably said, okay, let's draw a triangle with uh, a hypotenuse equal to one. Yes, I could have said that. But even that is not really enough to define the angle because then I have to really kind of build the triangle and I don't know really. I don't want to go into this, these details. This is much simpler. You have the circle of the unit circle. For any uh, angle, take this corresponding point, take its uh, ordinate, and that would be uh, the sine, and uh, take abscissa, it would be uh, cosine. That's much simpler. And again, for acute angles, this corresponds to this exactly. Now, what's an advantage beyond this absence of arbitrariness? Well, the advantage is that I can actually define these functions for any angle, not only acute angle. So I'm no longer restricted to acute angles because my definition doesn't involve right triangles at all. My definition involves a broader spectrum of angles and uh, obviously this is more universal. And it encompasses in itself the definition which I used to have for uh, the triangle. So now we are talking about 
sine of, let's say, 90 degree, which we couldn't really talk about if we were talking about uh, triangles, because there is no triangle with an acute angle of 90 degrees, or 180, or whatever, or minus 20 degree. So basically, again, this particular definition allows us to um, expand the uh, concept of trigonometric functions to any angles. But let me continue further with other trigonometric functions, and you will obviously understand why I defined it this way. Tangent is, by definition, sine over cosine. Now, again, if you remember, tangent is equal to opposite catheters ratio from the opposite uh, of the opposite catheters to the adjacent one. So it's B over A. So sine, which is B over A. So this is a definition of the tangent. And again, it's universal because our sine and cosine are defined for uh, basically any angle. Well, obviously, tangent does make sense only when cosine is not equal to zero, which means cosine is our A. So the tangent is meaningful only for those cases where A is not equal to zero. So for angles which are not 90 degrees and not 270, and all um, multiple of these if you add 360. Um, now, cotangent is, by definition, again, uh, cosine over sine, which again corresponds to my triangular definition of A over B. What else is left? Second and cosecond. So second, by definition, second F. Second phi is equal to 1 over uh, cosine of phi, and cosecond phi is equal to 1 over sine of phi. So these are all definitions. There is no need to prove anything. But the roots of these definitions are in those triangular properties which we were talking about. These are true functions of angle only. So angle by itself, given, is sufficient to calculate basically all these different functions. And that's been done. Basically there are, used to be tables, now it's all in the computers and calculators. Um, so the value of the function uh, sine or cosine or anything like that is already defined and calculated and it's built into our infrastructure. Now, using these functions, we can calculate many different things. For instance, we can calculate the lengths of one catheters if you know the lengths of another catheters or a triangle and an, an, an angle. So for triangles, it's obvious. But at the same time, as I was saying many times, practicality is a great thing about mathematics, but what's probably even greater is that it's the perfect field for uh, your creativity, for your mind work. And this universal definition of uh, sines and cosines and other trigonometric functions allows to introduce the whole spectrum of different problems, properties, theorems, etc., which we are going to explore in the next lectures about trigonometry. And, uh, it's just brain exercise to its fullest. So that's what I definitely suggest you to continue to approach um, uh, with, uh, with this particular attitude that forget about the practicality of these particular problems. They are important, but they have their own place. Um, the purpose of this course is not to introduce you to practical recipes, but to try to develop creativity and uh, intelligence 
sufficient to solve all kinds of problems in the practical life, regardless of the profession, not even related to the mathematics. It's just to develop your brain and intelligence and mind. So trigonometry presents a perfect tool for this, and that's what we're going to do in the next lectures. Thank you very much.